Fair the Burn, episode 38. Hey, everybody, thank you so much for being here. I know that this might sound a little weird. It's because I'm recording it off of my phone right now. We will get into the episode today, which I'm very excited about. I had my good buddy Odyssey of the Senor on. Um, definitely whiten up his name right there, but don't know any other way. So... Before we get into it, I just want to thank you guys for being here. If you're viewing this on the YouTube, you know, it's just the logo right now. We'll get into the video in a second. If you're just listening to it, I know that this is a little different than how it normally sounds. That's because I'm recording this right now on my phone. Again, we will get into the episode in a second. But I wanted to read a message that Odyssey sent me um, the night after we recorded this. And it says, he had texted me that he got home and he said, so good to hang out, my guy. I was thinking on the way home, I think I got Roe versus Wade backwards on the podcast. Um, I think it, it, it getting overturned and abortions able to be restricted was an overall bad thing for us as a people group. Um, the church should be the moral compass, not the church enforcing belief by means of the government. So there's a, there's a moment. There is a moment. Sorry. I thought the recording had stopped. There's a moment in the podcast where he talks about Roe versus Wade and how the church should be the moral compass. And he says on the podcast that he thinks it's a, it's a victory that we, that the Supreme court overturned Roe v. Wade. And he didn't mean that. He meant the opposite, that the church should be a moral compass, but it was probably an overall bad thing for us, which you'll kind of see in the podcast because I questioned him about gay marriage after that. And if it should be, um, if he thinks it, it would be a moral victory for us to overturn gay marriage. And he says that it wouldn't be. And I was kind of confused and I wanted to move on. You'll see this in the episode or hear it if you're listening. but. Yeah, just wanted to clarify that before anybody gets canceled out here. Thank you guys so much for continuing on this journey with us. And please enjoy episode 38, Life Group 3 with Odyssey Via Signor. Pretty face, go whipping in a rover. Take her out to dinner, got the chicken with the coleslaw. Lies that I told her, love you, but it's over. Need to be alone, but baby, maybe when we're older. Life ain't a science game, my thoughts over sirens. Instead of putting up fires, I might just lie in the violence. I need some love for a liar. I had to ask the Messiah that he don't look on the weekend or turn this wine into water. water. Sometimes I wish I never told you the things in my head I'm sorry I can never hold you The day that I left, I'm sick of looking for the old you Cause she disappeared, so I don't really ride with no one the rest of the year Toxic like the liquor that she drinking just to medicate I thought I ran the game and then she hit me with the hesitate Whoa, Let me meditate oh. You wanna check your little thing real quick, Odyssey The end of your cable, just make sure it's all the way plugged into your microphone Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is Odyssey via Senor, uh, checking his microphone, doing the thing. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is episode 38 of Fair the Burn. It is life group number three, uh, and I am here joined by a former jump rope team member, the man who I drove the first night with that I got my license we went and got burritos, and I ran a red light. <laughs> and uh, someone who I'm very excited to, to have on, on the podcast today, it is Odyssey Via Senor. <laughs> How you doing, sir? <laughs> good, man. Good, man. Thank you for being here. Yeah, uh, of course. Do you remember that night? I do now that you've mentioned yeah. it. <laughs> We went and got Los Betos. We got Betos, yeah. yeah. And I and I ran a red light. It you was the, sure did. The night I got my license, bro. So that was, um, it was really late at night when that happened, yep. right? Is that why we didn't get in trouble for that? Uh, it was late at night and there was like nobody around. But dude, yeah. think yeah, about yeah. it. If there was a car passing through that, I mean, we would have been, you know, out yeah. of luck. 
So yeah, not here today. For not sure. here today, but God's got our back. Um, me and Odyssey got some, got a little bit of bruise. We've been trying to set this meeting up for at three least weeks. twenty minutes. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know, like just like all of my friendships, all of my relationships, all of the people I'm trying to get on this podcast, we make plans, they fall through. We make plans, they fall through. Normally, on my end, has nothing to do with the other person. Always on me. <laughs> but we're here now. Um, and honestly, here now. honestly, I am glad that you're here dressed yeah. just like a bank teller. Just as I am, yeah. B- because that is what you are. That is what I am. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to start off uh, before we get into anything about the life group and about church or anything. And I want to say I always looked at you as the leader of our group. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I always, other than me. Um, <laughs> I was like, there it is. <laughs> That's what I was expecting. Because I'm egotistical. <laughs> but like, I even looked uh, looked to you a lot of times because I felt like the leaders, the people around, I mean, your your family mm-hmm. was very connected in general to the church. Yeah. Um, yep. And you yourself were someone who I think the leaders always trusted and tried to, I wouldn't say put in charge, but I would say if there was a moment of charge to give. Give a little bit more responsibility to. Yeah. yeah. Not, uh, not definitely not in charge in any would way. Would you though, agree no. with that at all? Like, did you ever view yourself kind of like in that? Um, to it to an extent. Um, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say they ever put me in charge. But when it came down to like, okay, I need to do you know X, Y, and Z job, and one of those things isn't going to get done by me. Okay. Rashi is somebody I can trust with item Y. I will give that to him and we'll we'll figure out the rest later. So would I I wouldn't say that I was ever, you know, I guess the the implication with in charge is like more important or more core to the group. I wouldn't say mm-hmm. that in in any way. Somebody they can hand off responsibility to a little bit easier, because I was present more often, I guess, is a good way to say that. And I, I think that is actually a good way to summarize that. I was present more often. Right. Yeah. Just a, a face that they they knew would be in on on a Sunday, they knew I was gonna be there. On a Wednesday, they knew I was gonna be there. So it had more to do with like the fact that your family was more involved and thus kind of through proxy making you more involved as well. Yeah. So they know that you can be there, so they know they can rely on you. Yep. That's interesting because I always kind of viewed it more as like they legitimately kind of viewed you as having more um, like gifts oh, <laughs> rather than kind of like an innate – than a like earthly responsibility that your parents may have still yeah. within you. You know no. what I mean? So – and the way – Hey, let me hit you with my my perspective is like you – have you, you ever – You thought I was the in... leader. <laughs> 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 We're getting there. Um, it, like have you ever – you ever worked in a retail job where – like you have a regular customer and at some point you're like, oh man, why would I do this thing when I know they can take out the, like, do you know what I'm talking about? Like, you're- like when you're working at a job and the person comes in to like shop and you're like, Hey, go pull my shirt. <laughs> well, okay. So I, I was a, I was a barista for a couple of years okay. and we had regulars who would come in and I'd be like, Man, you can take the trash out. Like, you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> like, no, dude, that's amazing. No, you yeah, did that. No, no, it was like, well, and if they were there all the time, yeah, you know, we you could can trust take the them. Trash with, out. Yeah, we could trust them. Like, oh man, I'm closing tonight. I know you're here, and I'm like, dude, it would mean the world to me if you, you know, did like or like, could you if you would wipe down that table, you would be my favorite person. And they're like, oh yeah, sure, I would love to do that that's where I feel like I fit in most. It wasn't, it wasn't even that, like I wasn't that, you know, that person or me is important to the important to the church or necessarily is even paid. It's like, he'll wipe down the table. Of course he will. Like, yeah. like he'll, he'll pick up chairs. I know he's going to be here. Like he will do it. And know? it's like a favor. You're kind of like asking for like a favor. Yeah. You're not necessarily yeah. saying like, Hey, do this because you're going to be the best person to wipe down the table. You know, it's more no, like, no, 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 you're no. here all the time. You pay your dues, <laughs> you know, like, you like, know how to wipe down a table. You can figure this just out. Just do it. You yeah. know? Yeah. And that, that's more of how I feel like their, their perspective was. And, Actually, um, I know from talking to some of the other guys, I think a lot of them have landed closer to where you are thinking that's true, whereas I don't think that's the case at all. But it was also me, so maybe 
I was just blinded by the the whole experience. I don't know. I genuinely yeah. don't know. Yeah, I, I I think it's a little bit more of the second. To be honest with do you, you? And, yeah. I, and I do, um, and I can kind of, I can definitely see where you're coming yeah, from, yeah, where yeah. you're like I'm around, but I, I think a lot of us looked up to you um, in a lot of different aspects because I, I I don't know, man. I just uh, I don't think that any of us are perfect, obviously. No, absolutely not. But I just think that well, you, you are, but. I am. That's yeah. true. Uh, if I was naked, I'd be more perfect right now. But I have clothes we can make on. That happen. We could on the Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash fair the burn. Um, but unfortunately, this is YouTube. And we have to stick by their guidelines. So <laughs> you have a Patreon. Oh, we do have a Patreon. You yeah. have a Patreon. Guess how many patrons we have? Patrons. Uh, three. N less. <laughs> <laughs> we have less than three. It's a great site, though. There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff up there. You could be our first patron today. You could be, uh, <laughs> watch Chandler be naked. Yeah, I am actually going to start coming out with a series where I do uh, a 15 minute podcast every other week in a speedo. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm trying to get people on our Patreon, dude, but no one wants to join. So I'm doing anything I can. We might switch over to OnlyFans. That's that's some inside baseball right there. Um, but yeah, man. But Odyssey, can you can you tell me, bro? Uh, I'm super fascinated in how long you were with the church. Um. The pursuit specifically, right? Yeah. Because um, I know that your family was there for a long time. Yep. You recently just, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say got done with the church, but you recently have no more reason to go there yeah. as far as attending or serving. I definitely have no more ties there, yeah. Yeah. Um, so when was the first time that the, you remember going? The first time, I actually remember the, the first time I was there, uh, semi-well, Um I first attended back in hold please. I'm doing some doing some math in my head. I was in the third grade. Holy so I don't know gosh. where where that puts us. If age wise? See, yeah, if I we think graduated like eight or nine. in yeah, if we graduated in twenty yeah, I was yeah, eight or eight or nine. If we graduated in twenty sixteen at the ripe old age of twelfth grade. Yeah, nine nine years prior, so two thousand seven, two thousand six would have been my first time there. What was like? Was it so the ch our church, um, like the original church, like started? The pastor moved from California because he, mm -hmm. him and his wife felt that they were called the Boise, mm -hmm. and they started doing stuff out of their garage initially, like out of their living yeah. room, out of their garage. Yep. It started to grow and grow, and then they moved to like a, like movie theaters. And the movie theater is where I joined them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what so, movie theater was it at? It was the real theater on Overland. Oh, like the yeah, 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 the dollar movie theater out there. Yes. Okay. It, I know so little about movies and movie theaters. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, it's like a small place. I kind of know what you're talking about. Yeah, like, it's I was like, if we like, drove to it, I could be, be like, yeah, that's where it was. But you're like, oh <laughs> shit, I remember that place. I used to worship God in there. <laughs> I ate donuts. I ate lots of. Do they had so many donuts. <laughs> they had donuts every Sunday. That was wild. Yes. That should be a thing that every church does. Donuts. Get donuts every Sunday. Uh, uh, and free coffee. That is something that I noticed at other churches. Free coffee. They do coffee bars where you pay for the coffee. Fuck Don't up. do that. Don't do that. Absolutely not. No. Free coffee, just like the pursuit. Donuts yeah. and all the snacks. Yep. And then sell your t-shirts. You can do this too. It's fine. Sell, yeah. Um, sell that's, the t-shirts. That's awesome. Donate to you, the church. Were you connected with like, what was like the children's group like back then? It is actually exactly the same back then as it is today. Um, they called it Extreme Life even back then. Wow. Uh, that's, K just, that's kindergarten through fourth? Yes. Mm -hmm. kindergarten. Oh, it was actually kindergarten through sixth back then. Okay. Yeah. Uh, kindergarten through sixth, they had no middle school presence at the time. There was a developing high school group, to my understanding, but as a third grader, you know, what do I know? Um. But yeah, once you hit uh, sixth, seventh grade ish, at that point, you were in the main service. Right. Um, but yeah, no, no kid, through, no K through fourth. That did not exist yet. Wow, wow. But the fact that they still called it Extreme Life yep. to it, me and kept that name is so crazy. Yeah. So extreme. So Extreme Life is actually not the pursuit's name for it. Did you not know that? Is it like so? I know that they have like a um, like a doc not a doctrine, but a What's the curriculum they go by? Mm -hmm. Is it part of the curriculum? Mm -hmm. Oh, really? So Extreme Life is part of the the Orange series. 
Okay. It's a it's a curriculum based down in the based down in the south, and they actually write curriculum for all age groups and uh, a bunch of different demographics. One of them specifically is their elementary age range. They call it extreme life and base it off of uh, 252 basics. Luke 2, mm-hmm. 252. 252. Yep. So. Yeah, extreme life. Not even a not even a pursuit name. It was like, this is from the company Orange, who writes the curriculum, and wow. even to this day they use uh, they use Orange. Um, even Hill City now uses Orange wow. for some of their uh, some of their younger groups. Hmm. Like, it is still a, still a very active curriculum. Do you know why it's called Orange? I have no idea. Do you remember what Luke two fifty two is? I know Jesus is involved in it. Jesus is involved in it. That's <laughs> right. It's something like, and Jesus grew in both spirit and men. It's like talking yes. about how they want them to grow oh, like in the in spirit of God, mind, body and but uh, also relationship like, with God. Yep. Yeah. I like taught a spread. lesson on that. I should have known that. <laughs> like from the renewal stage. <laughs> I should have known that one. <laughs> was that your senior speech? No, I was, um, I was in college for that. So no, not my senior my senior speech was, uh, or at least for these guys just now, was uh, based off of "Live, Laugh, Love." That was the punchline for my my speech. My guys were so mad at oh, me. Oh no, dude! You t- you gave them something off of a no, Hallmark so card I told instead them, of the Bible. I told them there are three. The three most important pieces of advice that I can give you are to, you know, live in the moment. Uh-huh. Make sure that make sure that you're taking advantage of every moment that you possibly can be and just be present. You know, get off your phone, enjoy life as it as it comes. Take opportunities to to laugh was the second one and don't forget to love God with all of your mind, heart, soul, strength. Live laugh love. <laughs> <laughs> dude no no i would have been no no i would have been your students i would have been your students i would have been like get this man as far away from me as you possibly can put him on a train shanghai this motherfucker and send him away i spent six years in this youth group to listen to live laugh love no uh that's crazy dude yep. that is so crazy um Speaking of, uh, so, I mean, to kind of get into it, can you kind of tell me, we were talking about it off the podcast right before. Mm-hmm. Um, so each life group has a leader or multiple sets of leaders right. that meet them um, every week. I don't know why you just did that. It stopped recording uh, for some reason. Sometimes it does that. Don't do this to me right now. Bitch. <laughs> Here, just cut it all out. Okay. Cut it all out. I don't know why I just did that, but it stopped recording. We're back now. Um, so I'm, that the editing on that is going to be tough. Uh, Do you know when it stopped recording? Yeah, fuck it. We'll just, like, right there. <laughs> um, so Audrey was telling me off the podcast before, uh, right each, now each life group recording. has a leader or multiple sets of leader that lead them um, in discussion after the sermon and Odyssey got involved with a, with a um, younger group when we were in high school with a middle with a middle school group, but you still attended our like high school life group on Wednesdays. Yeah. So when I hit seventh grade, um, actually, we'll explain that transition a little bit. So when we our grade was going into the fifth grade, um, or excuse me, the the sixth grade. Uh, they decided that with their new intern in tow, they were going to start a um, a new a new classroom for just middle school students, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grade uh, students. So, um, sixth grade, we jump into jump into that. Seventh grade rolls around for us, and at this point, it's still a new enough thing that it hasn't made its rounds among you know, the, the congregation yet, there's not a ton of traction to, to get adult leaders. So at this point, Andrew is just looking for anyone Mm -hmm. like to, to hop in. And I was like, I'm a seventh grader. Sign me up. Like, get me, get me in there. If I can help, I'm going to, I'm going to help. And so I, that's, that was the beginning of, uh, my service with, uh, what, with what well, I guess was already renewal, but um, 
with helping younger kids. So as I moved into high school at that point, they were like, okay, now we can officially recognize you as a Wednesday night midweek renewal leader. And you're going to help out with this group of kids who is uh, going into the sixth grade. That's what we decided, right? Mm-hmm. The incoming sixth mm-hmm. grade class. Three years younger. Yep, three years younger. Yep. yep. So uh, what was the question? So you move through with them until you're a senior. Yep. Right. Until I was and a then when you're a senior, they say that because these guys are in high school now too, they're in ninth grade, you're in 12th grade. Yep. It gets a little weird. Yeah. It, and. Um, Weird, yeah. Weird was the was the word they they chose because it's not that they didn't think that it was a good idea to do. They were mostly concerned that if I went to high school camp, uh, I was going to not be a student gotcha. at that camp, and I was also going to go to the middle school camp where I was also not going to be a student. So they were like, "Hey, you should really consider." just being a being a present body and enjoying the camp rather than feeling like you're here to work Mm -hmm. you know what i mean so we're caught in some weird middle ground yeah you know what i mean of like a like am i a student or am i a leader or and actually that that conversation turned into um on on most wednesday nights if that group didn't have the uh the leadership I was actually skipping our life group uh, to go hang out with with those guys, and they decided for you know it's senior year. This is going to be your last opportunity to just be a student and just be someone who attends. So we ultimately ended up making the decision that I was going to. I say we. It was my ultimately my decision uh, that I was going to spend the rest of senior year just being a student so i didn't attend uh i didn't attend their their camps or anything like that anytime that there was a high school event i was a high school student you weren't like serving in swerve or anything no they they bar well i was still serving in swerve um because there was another group of middle schoolers that i was going to take over uh foreshadowing i was going to take over later but yeah like wednesday nights i was not going to hang out with those guys High school camp rolls around. And Fuck, man. Why is it doing this? I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, you're so good. I'm so sorry. What is happening? Dude. Here. It, like, has done this once. It's senior year. This is going to be your life. Going out with, with those guys. And they decided for, you know, it's senior year. This is going to be your lap. You know you were around there? I think you're talking about how it's your senior year. Yeah. Gonna... I was on a few minutes ago. <sighs> yeah, it was a few minutes ago. <laughs> Great, you bro. Okay, here we go. Please, God, let it run. Please, God, let it run. Let it run. Oh, Holy Spirit, who lives in the reverb. Okay. Holy Spirit. I don't know why it's doing this. I'm going to have to make some serious cuts. This might be an audio only episode. <laughs> are you are you ready for something brilliant? Uh what do, what what do you mean? It's your senior year and this is going to be your <laughs> final what what was you gonna, laughing it's at? Gonna, it's going to it's going to be your senior year. They want you to be a student, <laughs> I right? Don't, yeah, final year to be a student. So, they decided and well, again, ultimately it was my decision to to do it, but I'm just going to be a student and yep. focus on developing myself. Be a student. Don't worry about anything else that's going around or you know going on. Just be present mm-hmm. in the in the moment. You know, live, mm-hmm. live in the moment. Yeah, live. Uh, the the core principle to Jesus' life. Number yeah. one, the first <laughs> L. Uh, so when they took you from you know your first group, I I'm not take you, but like when they you know mm. kind of suggested maybe that it would be a little awkward for you to be leading these guys, yeah. you would know where to fit, and then gave you this different group. Like, um, did you feel any certain type of way about that? Like, did you wish that like you could still stay with that first group? Like, I put out the call to that first group that I because we we saw it coming a long time in advance, so we said, hey. I'm going to be moving to this other group because of the the age difference. 
if you want to come down with me as a student leader, now that you guys are in ninth grade, come down with me and uh, we will be leaders together. And a couple of them actually did. It was really cool. That's awesome. Um, so I got to be be their leader in a in a different way than I than I had been before. So that was kind of neat. Yeah. Did that go into like any like sort of like mentorship? Like were you like mentoring or or uh, not disciple? Is it men mentorship and discipleship? Mentorship, right. Discipleship. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no. Uh, okay. Ultimately, the the couple guys that I did bring down, a uh, few of them moved to some of the. Uh, a couple of the grades lower than the one I was in. And uh, some of the ones that had stayed with me in the, the grade that I was in, mo all of them ended up uh, going out and doing their, doing their own thing, which, you know, all the power to them. Uh, so I never, I didn't actually get to see that go all the way out to the, to the end, but some of them did stick around. And I know that, I think one or one or two of them is still around for another year, so that's you know kind of exciting. Yeah, I'm not going to be there for that, but it's kind of <laughs> Ozzy cut his ties, man. Yeah, cut his ties. Uh, cut his ties and cut the podcast short. Like it's stopped three times already. So, um, your group that just graduated, the how'd you, how'd you like those guys? Pretty awesome. Oh, they were awesome. Yeah. Uh, I. My my only sadness with them is uh, I wish my life hadn't gotten so busy during some of the more important years mm. um, so I could have spent more time with them. Those, the, those couple years immediately following college for me were not um, – they were they were times that I needed to oh, probably needed to just stop being a leader for a little while, but mm. I was like, I'm gonna just just show up and be a warm body in the room, and that's really all I was sometimes. Was be a present, warm, warm body in the room. Yeah, you're present, but you're not present. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some some like the the nice thing about the way I was busy um, during the the season that I've got in mind in particular, I was a Bible college student. Um, and also volunteering at a, at a high school program and a, a volunteering at a different middle school program. Uh, so I was writing like three or four lessons and sermons a week. Um, so I was like, it was always on my mind and I was like, I can just regurgitate the thing that I learned in class today and it'll be fine. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. So how long did, were you at, uh, your Bible college for? Oh, um, under under two years. Okay. Under two years. What were you studying? I never actually picked a degree. Okay. And let me tell you why. Because I never decided to go full time. And when an opportunity came for me to get out, I did. Hmm. I just didn't want to. First, I, I, this, is a, this is a whole thing. We're going to... I'm deciding right now that we're cutting this into a segment of the podcast because you I haven't seen you since I uh, actually joined BBC, right? No, I, I saw you after BBC. Did like, I get a did we get a chance to talk about it at all? Not really, because we were drinking. Because we were going out drinking and I didn't really I didn't really want to bring up BBC. Uh, you should have. I would have had a lot of uh, shit faced random things to say <laughs> that I will tell you now that were being recorded. And put online. And online at for the Patreon.com <laughs> forward slash fair the burn. Yeah, man. I, I, uh, I mean, just some backstory before we get into your time at BBC oh, okay, and yeah. uh, while we were there. I mean, both of our direct leaders went to BBC. They did, yeah. Um, and that's a big reason why a lot of us wanted to go there. Yep. Um, I personally thought that our life group was going to start a church somewhere uh, from like 8th to about the middle of 10th grade year. We, we're going to talk about this, but um, some of us stuck it out. At BBC? Well, no. Uh, or at, not, like, at, like, starting a church. Like, some of us are still there. Oh, to, interesting. But we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah, okay. We'll get to that. Okay. Um, but, yeah, all of, our, all of our direct leadership all went, to, all went through Boise Bible College, learned, you know, got their, their theological foundation there. So, naturally, as... Uh, Somebody who was heading in that direction of like, oh, I want to start a church. This is the group of guys I want to go with. Uh, 
Harrison, myself, and Nathan Davis all ended up at, at Boise Bible College. You mm-hmm. know, we did the we did the thing. Um, that was one of the one of the most formative times in my life because it was at that point I was old enough to realize that the church really sucks, mm. and I. It was at that point that I learned, like, okay, like, I understand that a lot of people in the church are assholes, but I couldn't figure out, I couldn't ever put words to it right. and figure out, like, okay, am I, are they actually assholes or am I just really, you know, unhappy with, uh, with what they are? And being at BBC. I'm so sorry, <laughs> I'm really, I'm really I wonder, fascinated. is it the... It's my mouse. Is it the mouse? It's the mouse. What about the mouse? Uh, the, one of the... So... One of the most formative times in my life... Oh, that's pretty close. I'm trying. Um, this, this laptop was involved in a car accident. <laughs> oh, no! Uh, yeah, it, it was in my passenger seat when I got hit, so... Um, the mouse was just kind of fucked up. I'm going to continue to pay attention to it. Should be good. Should be good. Okay, although it stopped again for the fourth time, Ash was talking about how it was very formative in your life and how um, for a long time you couldn't figure out like why the you at Big Bible College you realized that the church sucked. Yeah. Um, just pick up where I think it left off. Um, it was... Dude, dude, dude. You're a rock star. <laughs> you're you're crushing this. Uh, it was one of the the most formative times in in my life, learning and finally being able to put words to some of the some of the feelings and theories that I had had in the in the past, but I'm now old enough and like independent enough to put words to them and be like oh no, I was right. These, these folks actually suck. Mm -hmm. And I hate this. Like we, do you remember at any point having a conversation about, uh, you know, if you're trying to find your purpose in life, think about what makes you angry and that's where you can find out what you're passionate about. Yeah. They had a word for that, like divine anger or some, something like that. Yes. Righteous anger. Righteous anger. That's what it is. Yeah. Find the thing that you're like, righteously angry about and that will be your calling in life and being at bible college is where i found the thing that makes me the most angry um and to put it really simply i don't like it when people use some sort of like just religious egotism to be like I'm right and you're wrong and I know God because I have a degree and you suck and are going to hell because of it. Like mm-hmm. the thing I would say the thing that drove most of us out of the of the life group in the end was that attitude. Mm-hmm. And it was the thing that that got me out of going to Bible college. Did I tell you I got hit by a truck? Yeah, when you were on your bike, right? Yeah, I was. Yeah, and that's yeah. Go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, so I was. Uh, I was biking to school, uh, biking to the the Bible College, and that weekend it was Friday morning. That weekend, uh, EBC has an event called the the All Campus Retreat, and for underclassmen, it is absolutely one hundred percent required. Okay. And honestly, not not so bad. Assuming that you lived on campus, because it was like a eight in the morning, you listened to sermons and whatever messages from people all around the valley, you know, telling you about their telling you about their church, their congregation, like what are some of the some of the cool things that they've learned, yada yada yada. It was really neat and informative. Are they like pitching you their churches, or are they not really? It was more like previous students coming back to be like, hey, this is some of the experience that I've had in the real world, and here's how. Uh, my education at BBC has helped me. So, gotcha. like, it, genuinely, I think it's a, the idea was really cool. Um, in practice, it was, I have to go to school at eight in the morning today, bike from school to work during uh, their, the college's lunch hour, 
bike back to school to do uh, another class, bike to uh, bike back to work because of course I did. Um, from there, normally I would go home, but now I have to bike back to school because uh, the campus retreat was starting that night was ending at like 9 p.m. or something where I'd have to bike from school back home to sleep just to go back to school again at 8 in the morning, stay there the whole day um, until like 8 or 9 o'clock in the evening, bike back home to sleep, bike back to school in the morning where I was going to have to miss uh, volunteering on Sunday for school um, knowing that I had a paper due on Monday. Wow. So at some point during all of this, I'm supposed to write that report for who became the guy who was the president of the school at the time. So he knows the retreat is happening. He knows uh, that all of us in that class have to be there. And he chose to put the due date on that Monday. Yeah. I was like, this is absurd. And I was so mad. Uh, about having to do that so i'm biking to i'm biking to school that morning and i am just very upset Mm -hmm. and so i ended up uh i there was a guy who ran a ran a stop sign and he he hit me i on like honest to god like he when uh when i got hit i got bumped got thrown into the into the middle of the road and i was like i stood up i actually walked myself back to the back to the curb and was fully anticipating having to go back. And it wasn't until the ambulance arrived and they told me, hey, man, you should probably stop asking people how their day was. Because um, <laughs> I was, like, trying to make friendly conversation. I was like, these people are helping me. I'm going to go Just back got to hit school. by a truck. Like, hey, man, how are you doing? I was like, I got to keep my attitude high because otherwise I'm not going to get back to school. Um, yeah, so you're still planning. Like, after you get hit by the truck, you're like, your mission is I still, was like, like, I my, still got to get to school. Yeah, my thought was, like, I'm going to sit here and rest for a little bit, and then I'm going to continue going to school. I'm definitely going to be late to first period, but I'm going to go back to school. Mm-hmm. Like, that was that was where my head was at. And then the ambulance showed up. They picked me up and took me into the ambulance, and it was at that point that I realized, okay, I'm probably not going back to school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um that is the most tangible way that God has ever spoken to me because I wanted out of that retreat so bad. Mm. I was like, God, I will do anything to get out of this retreat. And I got hit by a car. Wow. Like, and just because of like the exhaustion and just going back and forth. And I mean, it just seems like they were overloading you guys. Yeah. And that's, that's a lot of what it was is, um, their philosophy was, that this is a a boot camp for your spiritual life. Mm-hmm. And again, this the, all very good theory, all very good theory where we're going to take these kids, we're going to you know rigorously train them to be you know reliant on God to form the habits needed to have a robust and healthy spiritual life as they move forward into ministries which will probably be, uh, just as, or even more taxing, mm-hmm. uh, all things considered, like the workload at BBC was actually less than what I had in high school. Okay. Um, so, and probably less than most people's like undergraduate programs. Like I genuinely think it wasn't that bad. I just want to throw out real quick. You did go to a high school where you can graduate with your associate's degree. So you were probably used to a bigger <laughs> workload. Just to throw that out there. Um, I did do that, but I wasn't con- going to include that part, but I did do that. You did do that, but continue. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> Um, yeah, the, all, like all, all things said and done, it wasn't really that bad. The, where it broke down in practice was they assumed a lot of all of their, their students. And for the vast majority of them, staying on campus was a pretty reasonable expectation. But for somebody like me who grew up in, who grew up in Boise, kind of knew the area and if I could find something to do off campus, I was going to do it off campus Mm -hmm. because, you know, most of the kids are coming in from Oregon, wherever. And they're like, Oh, I don't know anything about Boise. I need to get food. I will go to the, you know, the cafeteria or whatever. Um, Just on campus. Yeah. Yeah. Like perfectly reasonable, perfectly reasonable for anybody who was committed to staying on campus. I was not, and I didn't want to pay to stay on campus. So Mm -hmm. that, 
it really brought into into perspective again the the like egotism of hey i'm going to train these students up in this exact way and anyone i'm going to make it hell for anyone who's not doing it in this exact way mm -hmm. um and i think god is bigger than that mm. that's really what it comes down to is you want to train somebody for an active life in in ministry don't tell them to change ministries every year tell them to commit to one because your job doesn't get to change every single year you're gonna have to slog it through it's five ten fifteen years of a, a ministry that's not very fun and that's real life mm -hmm. welcome to it not this boot camp whatever whatever it just it was not a good system uh for anyone who was not 100% involved into that into that system. And genuinely I don't think it's I don't think it was working. I know of 3 4 maybe a handful of success stories from that school. Everybody else I knew, you know, pretty much dropped out. Yeah, uh and I've also kind of heard I can't remember who it was that said this, but they said that someone they even knew um went to Boise Bible College and studied like preaching mm -hmm. and they were a better preacher before they went than after. Yeah. So like, even like it can kind of beat some of your gifts maybe out of you. Yeah. So here's a, here's a, here's an actual really good example of what you're talking about. There is a class at BBC that in theory is really cool. Um, it's called hermeneutics of preaching. Hermeneutics of preaching. Te one of those words, hermeneutics of preaching is what we're going to call it. Um, and the idea is that all of your all of your preaching should start with the foundation that the Bible is truth. Which again, in theory and on paper, sounds pretty good. But if you assume that everything in the Bible is true, you're also probably assuming that everybody in the crowd agrees that the Bible is true. Mm -hmm. How are you supposed to reach anyone who doesn't believe that? Right. Where do you... You don't. Is you the, can't. Is, you don't. You can't. It is an impossibility that you're going to be able to do that. And that's the mindset that they approached a lot of their ideas with, is that they we're going to have a conversation about relativ relativism either on or off the podcast. Mm -hmm. We've had it on this podcast before. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So um, Christians, a lot of Christians believe in the like, there is no such thing as relativism. There is only the the divine truth. And I actually believe that that's true, mm -hmm. but we need to redefine the word relativism. Okay. Um, because what is truth to, to one person is different to another one. If, you know, old, old Greg comes in here and like punches you in the face and then gives me a dollar, our opinion of Greg is going to be different. That is just fact. Mm -hmm. because our experiences will tell us that this person is or is not an absolute dickhole, right? Right. And that's just how it is. Like, I do believe that God is the ultimate definition of truth. I do not believe that everyone is given 100% opportunity to experience that truth in a way that we should force everybody to live by that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I don't think that you can, um, force anyone to live like Christians, like how God calls people in the mm -hmm. church to live. Mm -hmm. Um, and there, I can't, I can't remember if it was Josh or if it was someone else who said this, but it was like someone, it might've been Andy Stanley actually, yeah. who said, um, you shouldn't treat people who are far from God. You shouldn't judge people who are far from God for being far from God. You shouldn't. No. Because you can't. No. Yeah. And I feel that, um, how political are we allowed to get on this? Dude, we talk about all sorts of shit. Go ahead. Excellent. So, uh, Roe versus Wade was overturned, mm -hmm. uh, very, very recently. And genuinely, uh, as a Christian, I feel like that is a victory. Okay. Because, um, as a as a Christian, I believe that the moral compass of of a people group should come from the church, not from the government enforcing it on okay. people. Do I believe that uh, abortion is wrong? 
yeah, I believe uh, abortion is wrong. And which is to say that I myself and my wife are not going to get an abortion should she get pregnant. Am I going to force that upon anybody else? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. And if they decide that that's what they want to do, all the power to them. I will be sad that that that's the decision that they come to. But I will support them. Right. You know. And and even further, if they decide that, you know, five, ten years down the line, they decide that that was a, a a good decision, then awesome. I'm happy for them. If the stats are true and five, ten years down the line, they decide it was a terrible decision, okay. I'm going to be their friend at the end of it, not this, like, hey, I told you so, God is so, yeah. so powerful. It's like, no, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me lay this down. You're... I'm sorry that you feel that way, that it was a, it was a bad decision. Can I tell you a little bit more about how I decided that? And, you know, can we have a, a conversation about this? Because I feel like there's a lot of, you know, future hurt that can be avoided based off of what I know about this, this guy who wrote a book this one time, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So I, I I don't think that was the most articulate way of describing how I feel, but I feel like I got the point across. Yeah, I can, yeah. I can kind of see what you're saying. You're saying that uh, even though you would never judge someone or tell someone that they can't have an abortion, that you do feel like it's a moral victory for the country um, and for the people inside of this country for us to do that because you feel like the morality should be defined by the church as yeah. opposed to the state. Yeah, and I I genuinely think that's a... I don't have to argue with that. That is a that is a biblical principle. Look mm-hmm. at Acts chapter two. Did they try to take over Rome by any means? No. They were like, "Hey, we're going to submit to what Rome is saying as long as it doesn't interfere with me, my direct worship with God." And that was like very direct. If they told me to stop praying, that's where I draw the line. Anything before that, I'll carry a Roman soldier's. You know, backpack two miles as opposed to one because that's what Jesus told me to do. Or you could go to like Romans 13, like at the beginning of that, where it talks about how the government is um, not destined, but um, it put in place for God. Mm-hmm. Like they are they are there to do God's will. So unless they're telling you immediately to sin, then you should follow them. Yep. Yeah. They're the They're the rulers that God put into place for you in that exact moment right there. And it is on you to submit yourself to so that. So can I ask you a hot button question on Absolutely, that? you can. Do you think that homosexual marriage should be illegal? <laughs> uh, in America, as a general principle, yes. I think the, the, the Fed should really just hurry up and make that legal. They should make it legal or illegal? Legal. Oh, it, I mean, it is legal right now. But I'm saying, like, by your definition of, like, we should find No, morality. I mean, like, it should be illegal for Idaho to not let it happen. It should be illegal for Idaho to not let it happen. Okay, I agree with that. Yep. Can Idaho currently say that you can't get married if you're a gay person? I thought so. I don't know. Oh. I thought that it was legal because that's what they're that's what a lot of people on like the Roe versus Wade stuff. In the fifty first state <laughs> of <laughs> Fair the Burn, where it is currently <laughs> illegal for Adam and Steve to get married, I believe that the Fed the Fed should make it illegal for them to continue doing that. If that's true in Idaho, that's great. I don't follow politics enough to know whether or not it is. Do you? Okay. Okay. Do you feel like, I guess this is my question. Yeah. Do you feel like it would be more morally acceptable because of the church and what they say about homosexuality? Mm. Um, Would it be more of a win for us to say to overturn whatever it was like 2015 or 2016 that said that yeah. uh gay gay marriage was like federally legal do you think sure. it, would, it would be a moral win for us to overturn that much like roe versus wade no one's gonna judge you here yeah, bro. Mo- no one's gonna I, judge you here we're gonna talk about flat earth in about like three or four yes weeks, so. <laughs> um do i do i think on a on a moral level on a moral level, I'd say maybe not. Um, I think it would be a a step forward for us as a as a people group. Um, but when it comes to when it comes to moralities as 
imposed by imposed is the wrong word uh, moralities as set by uh the bible you know sure maybe not okay i i think there is a lot of value in letting people make their own mistakes and learning from them not i'm not at all saying that gay marriage is a mistake but but it is uh <laughs> um i'm not at all i'm not at all saying that and but i do think that there are times and situations where a person has a lesson to learn and the only way for them to feasibly learn that is to is to make the mistake to do it um and if i didn't think that and if i didn't think god thought that was true to some extent he wouldn't have given us free will to make the mistakes that uh we that we do mm -hmm. like my one of my students asked uh, uh, a few months ago, and I've been pondering the question a little bit ever since. If you know God wanted to give us free will, and therefore He put the the tree in the the tree of the knowledge of good and evil inside of the uh, inside the garden, and you know we have the we have the choice and all that to not take from the from the tree, right? Mm -hmm. He could have just avoided that. Um. He chose not to. Uh, and I feel like that has merit on answering the question whether or not there is free will. Yes, absolutely. And I think God 100% supports that. But I think there is also a level of we are the, the image of God and the image of God is to be rulers of the, of the dominion that, that God gives us, whatever that is for in a practical sense that's like, I have a bank account and it is my job to be wise with that bank account. Mm -hmm. We as a, as a species need to learn through a tremendous history what a wise way to actually do that is. And this is the method that God chose to do it in. And I think that's really fucked up. Just the atrocities that happen to to human beings but the other side of that is i need to trust that this is also you know if god is benevolent that this is also the best way to do it mm. which is a hard truth to swallow and i'm not even entirely sure that that's like the doctrine that i believe but it's where my thoughts have led me up until this point so do you think God, I'll come back later and let you know. He will. Um, I'm going to be in Pocatello, but we'll see. Uh, <laughs> we'll I, mean, I mean, I might yeah. be visiting you sometime out there. So yeah, yeah. We'll see. Well, yeah. Who knows? Uh, do you think that God knew that, that Adam and Eve were going to eat of the fruit? 100%. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. I think that God doesn't want slaves. That's the biggest thing is it's like God doesn't want us to not understand what is on the other side. Yep. Um, because if we are, if we see what's on the other side, we then have the choice to say no. This is what I want, yep. right? And it's like the the imagery they used to give us in, in youth group all the time. If you if I ask you if you want some pizza, yes, right, and you don't want any pizza, yeah, I'd be an asshole to give you pizza to continue giving I, me. I the would pizza. be like, no, yeah. no, no, take this, take pizza, the pizza, <laughs> take this pizza. <laughs> yeah, it's Hawaiian, and they're like, I don't like pineapple on pizza, and you're like, can take it. Pineapple on pizza is a good thing. Yeah, pound that, brother. Pound that. No, no, no. I'm just being the majority of people, but not. If and if you agree with me, join the Patreon. Join. The if pa you <laughs> don't think that's a good idea, then Suck join the Patreon, obelisk. and we'll explain on that uh, on that show why pineapple is a good idea and why you should be more open minded to try it. And just like anyway, Odyssey used to say back in the day, "Suck my obelisk." Suck my. O I forgot I said. That. You, for a long time, dude. And then we did an episode on this show about Freemasons um, and how did they, you? yeah, about how they worship Lucifer. Um, <laughs> well, that was Cameron's episode. Uh, no, you, well, you guys no. talked about it on we, Cameron's episode. We, uh, probably a little bit. We talked yeah, about a little bit. Freemasons it, a yeah. lot. Do uh, you? Oh yeah, dude. So I know an active member of the of the Freemasons. Mm -hmm. Like uh, personally, know at this point. Yeah, I know. I'm, I know a couple too. Yeah, I'm yeah. so I'm so curious about. 
what you've got. What well, you, bro, what you, you could about? you could go back to episode sixteen and check it out. It's I called literally Al- cannot. It's called Altion Child Exposes Freemasonry. I am literally so enthralled by all the videos on the Patreon that I don't have time to go back. Hey, there's so much content on there. Patreon.com forward slash Fair the Burn. Uh, yeah, man, uh, we can talk about that a little a little bit off 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 air a little bit. Um, That's fair. Go watch episode sixteen. Go watch episode. Go watch all the episodes. And, and, and keep watching this one, even though it's kind of a jumble of mess, and we're getting through it. We're getting through it. Um, cool, man. Uh, so I just want to hit on the relativity issue before we kind of move on, before we continue. Yeah, yeah. Um, so are you saying – so do you believe in relativity? In what way? In the case of truth. Like, like, like absolute truth. Do in the you, case of absolute truth, mm-hmm. I believe there is an absolute truth. Yes. So the universe and the foundations of it wouldn't be relative to you. That's that's where I that's where things get a little bit more complicated. Is there an absolute truth to how it all came into being in the logic of the universe? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, there is. Do we all experience that in different ways and come up with different conclusions based off of those experiences? Absolutely, yes. Um, Like I said, if, you know, I, I, what is the, I I said old Greg earlier. I wanted to say Joe Rogan, yeah, but. Yeah, Joe Rogan comes (laughs) in here, punches me in the dick, and hands you a dollar. And hands me a dollar. Um, We're going to have experienced that event in two very different ways and come to conclusions about how that event went and our opinions of how that went in two very different ways. Is there a hundred percent a concrete thing that happened at that moment? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Did we come to very different conclusions about it and very valid conclusions about uh, what, what that event was? Yes, absolutely. So I think that people just need to have more intelligent conversations about the word relativism is really what it comes down to. Do you think, okay, this is my last question about it. Do you think that that affects your salvation or one's salvation? Do I think that affects one's salvation? No, no, I don't. Uh, like, like, like this is my example, right? Like, uh, you have someone who grew up their entire, their entire time in Islam. Mm -hmm. Right, and they kept all the Islamic like commandments mm-hmm. and all that stuff, which is which is very similar to the Bible, like very mm-hmm. like Old Testament kind of Torah, Jewish esque. Yep. Um, and you know they talk about Jesus. They said that he was a prophet and all yep. this stuff. Uh, yep. So they know about Christ. Um, do you think that that person's salvation is affected by their relative experience? I believe that if you think that the the creator of the universe is confined to just having known the exact name of that guy who was hung up on the cross that one time, that your view of God is too small. Mm. God will show himself to um, every person exactly as he needs to show themselves to, or himself to every single person. It's not my job to be like, no, 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 no. It was it was Jesus of Nazareth. It was definitely Jesus of Nazareth. Mm-hmm. I think about um, people, groups who are considered un... What's the word? Uncontacted? It's not uncontacted. Yeah, um, like people who like have, don't have any like from the outside world. Right. Yeah, I think they're uncontacted. I think that's what I think, I think that, Somebody, that doesn't sound right. Put it right. in the comments below. Tell me why we're dumb. Damn, dude, you're way better at this than I am. <laughs> I watch a lot of YouTube. Uh. <laughs> um, when, it, when it comes to uncontacted groups... I don't think the obligation falls on us as white Americans to go out to them and then tell them who some Middle Eastern guy was and why that Middle Eastern guy is the most important person to them. God will reveal himself to them in the way he needs to do that. He doesn't need to use Jesus' name to do it. Mm. He'll do it the way he needs to do it. Mm. So you think that there are people who can be saved not through Christ? Necessarily, I, as we I, understand it in America, I I do still understand it to be that Christ is the is the savior of all the people. It's just that we happen to know his his legal given name, whereas other people might know him in a more abstract way. 
Um, mm. I'm trying to think of a good example here, but uh, well, actually, most most people group have some sort of some sort of idea of like good and bad, and actually, good and bad will fit uh, into almost every single people group, and I think there is something important to be gained from that, but. Um, a concept of bad being over overcome by the concept of good. That's really what the entire Christian experience comes down to. We just have more specific words defining those things for us. The you know the the son of the son of Eve crushing the the serpent's head. We know the son of Eve to be Jesus of Nazareth, whereas somebody else might know him as. I don't know the the spirit bird who was going to come down and eat the the worm of evil or something. That's a I don't know. That's right, or there was a, there was a con uh, there was an uncontacted tribe that got contacted um, by I mean missionaries and yeah. they couldn't really explain Jesus to them, so they explained him as like the gate man, like he is mm -hmm. the gate to like what can bring you to a higher place. Like that's right. kind of how they had to describe them. Yep. So they never knew him as like. Jesus or Jesus or Yeshua, like any of those like actual terms yeah. that you find in written scripture, they knew him as the fucking gate guy. Yeah. And if you, again, if you think that in order to be saved, you need to know Jesus as the savior. First off, no one in the old Testament knew the guy's name was going to be Jesus. Mm -hmm. Second off, your view of God is too small and that's all there is to it. God is absolutely. bigger than that. I would absolutely agree with that, bro. And I even, um, so I, I started this podcast with a friend of mine named Cougar, um, mm -hmm. Coburn mm -hmm. and he, uh, man, like has really been diving into scripture lately. So okay, when I him. met him, he was very far from the church, like not, you know, and I was kind of on the same, same path of like really not yeah. knowing where I fit in and still kind of wrestling with Jesus and stuff like that. Smoking a little too much weed. Uh, <laughs> but like. Over the last, since we started Fair the Burn, really, like, I've really se seen God move in him in a lot of ways that he's yeah. just now understanding might be God, if that makes oh, sense. Oh, that's cool. Like, yeah. his yeah, yeah, yeah. way of being has been, like, more biblically and scripturally based without him even realizing it. And I had yeah. the debate with him the other day. I said, Cougar, even if you died, like, let's say that he got hit by that truck, right? Yep. Before he fully realized, and he wasn't wearing a helmet. Yeah. Shout out to Mr. Keith. Yeah. That's the oh, only reason. That's the, that's the reason I didn't die. Yep. Uh, I cracked my helmet that, yep. that day. So <laughs> yep. all of the wisdom from my childhood Mr. came Keith, together. Dude, Dr. Keith Dr. Anderson. Dr. Keith and Mr. G Ms. Jeannie. Dude, shout out. I'll tell you what, I have a bike right over there that my mom got for me, and I started riding it with without a helmet around, and I thought about you. I did. And I was like, oh, frick. You know, for all the Christians listeners out there. Uh, he meant fuck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Go on. I should wear a helmet because Odyssey could have died. If he, he, if would he wasn't have. wearing a helmet, he, he would have died. Yeah. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so I, I agree with that. Um, completely forgot what we were talking about. Oh, oh, I said, Cougar, if you got hit by this truck, right, and you weren't wearing a helmet and you died on Mike Odyssey, who lived because God loves him. Um, well, you. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> <laughs> and because Mr. Keith and Mrs. Janie told us. I believe that God still would have saved him. And it's not my call to say, yeah, you're going to go to heaven or not. But I was like, Cougar, I've seen Jesus working in you for so long that he's, you know, like every other religion is, is man reaching out for God. Whereas Christianity, like to me and people say this all the time, is God reaching out for man. Jesus was coming to you, man. And he was like really trying to get a hold of you. And now I feel like he's at a point where he's really diving into doctrine and scripture um, and I would love to introduce you guys because I think that you guys would have fascinating conversations. Probably would. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more off the, off the pod. But I totally agree with you where I think that if you believe that Jesus needs to be the apps, like Jesus has we know him or whatever, or you need to go to church every Sunday or whatever, like to be saved and you need to get baptized in order to be saved and all these like foundational things, people are like, you have to do this mm -hmm. and you're, or else you're not going to go to heaven. I totally agree. Your idea of God is tiny. It's way too small. Yep. I mean, at that point, you are putting restrictions on the guy who made the logic of the universe. He gave you the restrictions. He gave you the restrictions. And there, I, it, this is not doctrine, and I will preface that with this, but, uh, this with that, excuse me, um, that if you know that you should, 
you know, pray the sinner's prayer and get baptized, you should do those things mm -hmm. um, because they are good practices, not because they are necessary. And mm. you'll see, like, going through the, the book of Acts where um, what, are, what are the requirements to be saved was a, a paper we had to write, an actual very insightful paper that I'm happy that I did do. Um, in the, I believe there are three different moments where, uh, somebody is like saved and converted in that, uh, in that very moment, I think minus Paul, um, a people group is saved and converted in that moment. There are different steps that they take to, to do that. Baptism only shows up in, I think two of the, two of the three, Flying tongues only shows up in two of the three. Like, mm -hmm. not all of the pieces all fit into every single one. Which, to BBC, I, I don't remember what their ultimate conclusion was on, on it. I just remember it being very unsatisfactory. To me, I interpret that as, hey, if you know you should do it, you should do it. If you don't need, if you don't know to do it, then God probably didn't want you to know that you needed to do it. Mm -hmm. Like mm. he's not going to, I, I genuinely don't think that if it was a matter of like life or, or excuse me, salvation and not salvation, that God made people who were allergic to water intentionally because then they could never get baptized. And that freaking sucks. Wow. It's a, it's a, like a really out there example. No, but that but totally, the point makes totally sense. sticks. Yeah. Totally makes sense. Yeah. That is fascinating, bro. Dude, this is why I wanted to do this podcast, man, is because you guys have all said shit, like, and again, I was one of the guests um, for Life Group 2, and I said some shit that was pretty profound, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you and Cameron, The leader, some would say, yeah. I Thank you, and we'll get back to that, <laughs> uh, but um, you and Cameron so far, man, like, just, I, this is why I wanted to reconnect with you guys, because I really think that we all had something good, which kind of leads me, what, do you got a time you got to be out of here? Or? No, 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 no. Okay. What's up with this church? You guys possibly might want to... <laughs> you look, you're looking for a youth pastor? I, uh, <laughs> here's the thing. Is the, the more and more that I've become part of institutionalized church as a, as a gathering on Sunday, the less and less... I think that that was the original intention. Bro, give me some. Give me some, son. Yeah, continue on that. I I think um, that the church does need, like the, the capital C church, um, does need specific things in order to work. A uh, nuanced conversation about theology is one of those things that needs to happen. Um, a, a robust set of relationships and social groups needs to be part of that. Outside of that, oh, and, uh, um, not a constant need, but a, a hunger for more growth in, in its, in its people, you know, just, where we've got a we've got a group of people who play board games on Monday nights and we just want to make that group bigger to bring genuine joy and the love of Christ to to people's lives. That can be church. And that's what the Bullocks are doing down in Australia. And I think that is not the not the like most ideal, but I feel like in many ways the most pure idea of what the church should be not this. We meet on Sundays and, you know, drink the, drink the grape juice and hear about Christ from one, one guy who standing we all up pay. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who we, yeah. Who we pay his salary. Like, I think there are a lot of benefits to, to doing that. Otherwise I wouldn't be part of a church myself. Um, 100% are benefits to that. And I think that Josh is smart enough that I do um, I do enjoy all of his sermons basically every single Sunday, him and anyone else who, who teaches on a Sunday. However, I don't think that that rigid legalism of I need to show up on a Sunday morning at 11 a.m. sharp to 
drink this grape juice and this cracker that aren't even grape juice and crackers anymore. It's all like synthesize this, that, and whatever, because we need to be, I have so many opinions on communion. Uh, mm. That structure is not, it is the lowercase C. It is the lowercase C. And I feel like if I were to walk up to any of the, the pastoral team at, at Hill City and ask them, you know, is what we do here on, on a Sunday the big C? I should clarify. What, do I need to Go clarify? Ahead. Yeah, we've never so, talked about the yeah, little C, yeah, okay. the big C. So, b- little C, big C. Um, it, are the, both the word church. When we're talking about uh, uppercase C, we're talking about like Acts chapter 2, church, the the bride of Christ, uh, as it's referred to in uh, a later book that somebody in the comments will write down below. Um, the like perfect, idealized, and actualized version of what the what Christ was trying to bring to the world. Whereas the lowercase c um, is this is the place that I attend on Sundays. And I absolutely believe. Yeah, organizations. And I 100% believe that if I were to walk up to any one of the pastoral team at the at Hill City and ask them, is this the big C or the little C? They would all 100% say, this is the little C. The big C exists. We're trying to help facilitate the big C. We are not the big C. So that's why uh, I'm a part of Hill City Church. And I will say, too, uh, the one thing that you can't take away from Josh is that dude's brain. Uh, that guy mm-hmm. does have mm-hmm. a way of preaching and a way of speaking and communicating yep. that I think I wouldn't say is necessarily unmatched because there's obviously a lot of people who God's given gifts of speaking to. Yep. Um, but just I, I still watch Hill City. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I've yeah. never been, and I watch Hill City because <laughs> well, I'm good. like, hey. yeah, because Josh is a good preacher. Yeah. And I don't always agree with what he says, I but, I, but I think that's church, bro. Like, yeah. you're saying that's where you get into the nuanced, nuanced conversation. conversation. Like, you guys, ju- you just had, bro, I'm ta- I'm telling you, you yeah. just had the Sermon on the Mountain talks. Literally, yeah. the, like, the last month. Yeah. I've been watching them. Hey! Okay? <laughs> and I disagree with what Josh says by saying that Jesus, um, when he says that he didn't come to abolish law, but to fulfill it, I totally disagree with what Josh says. Yeah, and I and 100% why. agree with it, and that's why we're going to have a nuanced conversation about it. That way we can get to our own conclusion of what truth is so that we can get to absolute truth. There it is. Or, the or, even, that, or even besides that, bro, like I just feel like that was something that I've always felt comfortable with everyone in life group regardless. Like, if I had some sort of question, and maybe it's because we were kids, so we were a little less, like, knowledgeable and, like, scared. That might be a good thing, though. Um, that might have been to our benefit. But I even remember when we hung out after, you know, in 2019, right before COVID, when we went out drinking and stuff, I had brought something up about scripture to you, and Adam Casper was there. Do you remember this? Adam Casper was no, at don't. Black... Dude, so weird. Adam was at Black Rock Coffee when we met up with you and Nathan and me... And someone else, do you have a bottle opener? I sure do. Bro, can I can I get one of these for me too? Um, and Casper was there, and me and you had had talked about something in the Bible where it was like, I, f- I forget what it was, but I thank you. Cheers, brother. So good. Um, I forgot what it was, but even I had brought something up, and you said, "Well, no, I don't. I don't think that it's like that." And I said, "Okay, well, why?" And you, from behind the barista counter, told me why you don't think that this scripture is why it is. And I told you why I think it was. I don't think we really came to a conclusion. Because uh, we were out in a coffee shop. Um, I was working. <laughs> and you were working. But, but yeah, man, like that's I definitely agree. I mean, I don't think that organized church is inherently a bad thing. But mm-hmm. I don't think it was how God initially set us up to be. Yep. I think God set us up to be just one giant big C with a lot of house churches. Which is yep. like what you see in a lot of early Christian churches, where people meet at their house. You know, you draw sticks or whatever to figure out who's going to be teaching whatever lesson, yep. and it's a, it's a lot more commun like community yep. based. Yeah. So, I'll give you I'll give you a more concrete example of how this is playing out over at over at Hill City. We joined, um, my wife and I joined a, a life group there. They actually kept the kept the same names, and there is a. Um, it's a couple's life group. One of the husbands and wives is the husband is like in the hospital at this very moment right now. Like, oh, well. so, um, the situation is pretty dire and 
at the moment that it happened, like when when he was flown out to to Salt Lake, we were like, "Give us the word, we will drive down there right now." Like, if you need something, we will drive down to Salt Lake right now. And it wasn't just uh, it wasn't just Maddie and I offering to do that. It was like. Oh, you had to leave your kids here in Boise. Like, can we take them out on like a on like a play date or something? Like, can we do something with them? We all downloaded Minecraft onto our computers because we wow. know the girls love mine or watching Minecraft creators. Like, I'm not saying that we're the idealized version of the church, but this is not like. Yeah, sometimes we see them on on Sunday, and that's cool. But it's like, no, I just want to be there mm -hmm. for you um in your like in your life whatever you're going through just you know talk to me like yeah let's i i just want to hear how you're how you're doing um and i you know i say i but it's not just me it's everyone else in that in that group that's what the church is supposed to be it's doing is, life together it's doing life together mm -hmm. doing life together being there for each other all of those like those core foundational principles that we learned growing up in a life group that I don't think we ever learned the gravity of what any of that stuff ever meant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely agree. Definitely agree. Cause when I left the church, everyone abandoned me. So it's all good, but, <laughs> oh man, I, I made a joke to Alex when I was talking to him, uh, that I was like, dude, we all live like five minutes away from each other. Like, how how have we not stayed in contact? And I found out. Uh, I asked him about like where he was living, and I found out we are all actually within like five minutes of each other. Oh, it's you not and Alex a are super joke. close. Yeah, yeah, we are actually we've been within five minutes of each other for the last six, seven, eight years. And he didn't even have my phone number anymore. Like, yeah. Like that's just, that's not and that's not a dig on him. That's a dig on us, as a collective. As a collective, we're getting the band back Capital together. Capital C, Church. Capital C Collective. Uh, yeah, man. Um, uh, just big change of change of gears here. Uh, what are some of your favorite camp moments? Let's start as a student. Okay, actually, do you have one that comes to your mind, like off the top of your head? Um, I will share this one because it's relevant to the, the previous point. Okay. Um, which is that, uh, at one point I went to a, a winter camp. It was my junior year winter camp. Okay. Um, and at this particular camp, I was, it was a high school camp. So I was a student and I was supposed to be just a student. Um, we had gone to... And I say we, I'm talking about uh, Nathan Davis and uh, Maddie McBride. We had been at the at the middle school camp like a month earlier, so we had heard all the we'd heard all the lessons, heard everything, um, had experienced the camp before. We knew everything that was going on, and we could see uh, that in some ways they were struggling to make the schedule come together as as cleanly as they would have liked. And we're three people who have already done the schedule. So we know exactly what needs to be what and where. Also, we kept the same schedule for every single winter camp for so many years. So it wasn't like, it wasn't even like the three of us are like, oh, we're so smart because we were at the last camp. It's like, no, we've been doing this for a long time. Yeah. Everybody knows that we're following a little bit behind and we can all feel that. The three of us were just equipped to do something about it. Mm. And they told us to not do anything about it. And so we decided to do nothing about it oh, and then man. not participate in any of the activities for the next <laughs> three days. <laughs> what did you guys do? We just hung out. Just chill, we, dude. We knew, like, uh, we were like, at this time, we know everybody's going to be at this location, so we're just not we're going just... to be at that location. That's amazing. That's great, man. Yeah. Uh, that's a winter camp I would have liked to go to for sure. To dope. like show up and be like, man, I'm just gonna kick it. <laughs> we're just gonna like and what like uh, there were multiple times where we would just be hanging out and they'd be like, hey, you know, all students in the place, and we were like, we literally did this a month ago. Don't at me. 
like full grown like, adults would be like, yeah, these three high school students know what they're talking about and just walk out. <laughs> Incredible. You just look at them. I paid $150 to be here and do nothing. I paid $150 to not participate in this camp yeah. and you're <laughs> not about to change my mind. Um, you remember the first go camp? Which one? <laughs> The first one, bro. The very uh, first one. Our we were, first one. We were no. When we were sixth grade, that was the first go camp. Mm-hmm. Do you remember this? I don't think it was called go camp. It was. It was absolutely called go camp. And you know how I know? How do you know? Because they had the duct tape art. And I remember walking in. I was there at the previous year, but go on. Okay. But were, were you there that year? I was there that year. Okay. Yeah. With the duct tape art. So like, yes. I had been going to the church for. I mean, I started. My fifth grade year, spring, so like going into sixth grade was the first time that summer I had the opportunity to go to a camp. Going in, into sixth grade. Um. So we had some, it was summer camp, right? And so they considered you the grade you were going to be. Right. So I started going to church on Mother's Day in my fifth grade year. I remember that. Okay. Yeah. And then we st- and then camp was in like July or something of that year and since we had graduated I fifth grade they consider it too serious to watch it pass me by i'm awake i'm aware not delirious this is me and it feel right i'm a star in the waiting area this era is my prime i'll pack the load i'll carry ya if i can find the time this kind of feels like basement eyes. Philosophize my life, but green or vaporize. I hate my life. When I sleep in, I'm keeping my secrets close to my heart. You'll have to kill me to get me goofing, geeking. I'm seeking out greatness, but the cost is my regular likeness leaking out like some unwanted nudes. I face unwarranted and unwanted dudes. I feel-